Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to the yard here in Grounded. This is episode 2, and last time, a missing teenager was seemingly kidnapped, shrunken, and then airdropped into a scientist's backyard. And now we are investigating in hopes of finding a way to make ourselves big again. Though, Pete certainly doesn't seem to mind being tiny. He seems to be having fun with the adventure so far. But he also hasn't been devoured by a wolf spider yet. Also, something I forgot is that spiders are actually resistant to stabbing damage, which is why that uh, Orb Weaver Jr. was taking so little damage. So, I think one of our main objectives for this episode is going to be to make the spiky sprig, because that is effective against a lot of different enemy types. And if we look at our, uh, our data here from our scans, you can see it actually does tell you not only the weaknesses and resistances, but also the weak points, which were not a thing as far as I remember in the last version I played. They didn't have specific spots you had to hit them. So we are going to want to try to stab these ants in the eyes with our spears when we need to kill some ants. Though, of course, the red worker ants are harmless until you piss them off. But I'm definitely going to have to remember to use that to scan everything because back when I played it last, that information was actually not available in-game. You had to pretty much look at the wiki where I guess people had data mined out the weaknesses and everything. So having a way to get that information without just, you know, trying every weapon on every enemy is nice. And I'm going to take advantage of that. Alright, so we got this lab here that exploded after we tried to turn on the spacer last time. And there's just aerosolized raw science leaking everywhere. look like idealized geometric shapes in that pink thing. They can't be real. Only Pete would know that. Nobody else in the crew would recognize idealized geometric shapes. The pure essence of science. We also have another resource analyzer here. Might as well use it while we're here. Science! And now we should be able to make a shovel, which is the last of the kind of primary tools that we were missing. You know, from that point on, we're going to be pretty much only upgrading those tools with better versions later on. And we could also make acorn armor, which is the strongest tier one armor I think you can make for damage resistance. And this thing is pretty much only made for various base parts. However, the spinning wheel is important, as well as the smoothie station. Sap catcher is not that big of a deal, but we're probably going to want to make a few of those at some point, just so we have a good way to stock up on sap. And then the garden patch for growing crops. Not quite enough to get us to brain power 2. I have isolated the source of the particle irregularities. They appear to be a byproduct of the shrinking process. If I adjust the machine to account for their existence, it should be the key to the de-shrinking, uh, expanding process. Burgle, please bring up the readings for the irregular covalent SNPI 42Z particle traces. Ugh, that name is going to get tiresome. And while you're at it, rename all references to the irregular covalent SMPI 42Z particle to Raw Science. Order received. Raw Science identified. Does it require cooking, flipping, or g, -g, -g grilling? No, 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 none of those. Categorization. That answer is not permitted, according to health code standards governing the handling of raw food items. I like that he told him it's not, you know, something that needs to be cooked. And then he writes down here, but can it be cooked? <laughs> Instead, you have to contain and cool it. Otherwise, it will probably violently explode like we saw. I like, too, that he's discovered this particle, but he has no idea what it is or where it comes from. But that's kind of our unobtainium for this game, I think. The thing that makes all of this technology possible. And remember, this is the, well, I guess the 
1990 specifically, I was gonna say the 80s. So that's why all of the technology is so, like, chunky and analog. Most of these laboratories that we explore will have a couple of these shelves of just resources, so... Good to keep an eye out for those, just to stock up on whatever. Also, this device was not here last time I played the game, but it looks like it shows us the other labs. So there's the pond lab, which has a backup battery failure that we're going to need to fix at some point. We have the haze lab, which we're not going to be seeing for a while because it is impossible for us to reach right now. There's a black anthill. I think they added a couple new labs or mini labs or something. But of course, that's the part of the patch notes they always redact, so I don't know where it is. Yeah, it only shows the ones that I am already familiar with. Biometric scanner. Are we going to have to find somebody's shrunken, severed hand in order to get in here? Ambigan Test 45. Category, non-organic. Date, 070189, 7.31am. Cell volume, 0.00064.8524 milliliters. Raw science power, 76.5 decijoules? I don't know what that would be. <laughs> Spacer input, 914.32 megawatts. I don't think we need to read all of this every time. I think we can skip that and go right to the actual note. Tully backyard, Dr. Randall Tully. Pre-test notes. After successful miniaturization of a single complex electronic device, test 44, Test 45 will attempt to shrink one full box of the devices. Upon embiggening, subjects will be inspected and tested to ensure proper functionality. Results. Failure. Miniaturization successful, but embiggening and further testing is impossible at the moment. Subject was confiscated by a curious honeybee. Recovery unlikely. Box obliterated, miniature scabs, or scabbies, are certainly stuck in every nook and cranny of the yard. Okay, so that explains why they are just everywhere for you to pick up. <laughs> A box full of them blew up in the air and scattered them all over. And then curious bugs probably dragged them around. We could help this burgle up, but we could take a selfie instead first. I kind of wish I could rotate Pete. So one problem is you can't really position yourself easily. Or can you? I can't remember if there's a setting for rotating the character. Photo settings. Oh yeah, there is. There we go. Just me and my new buddy Burgle, who I'm not helping, as you can tell. <laughs> I think some of you know by now that if there is a photo mode in one of my LPs, we're going to be using it a lot, so you're just going to have to deal with that if you're impatient. All right, let's help him up. Alas, I am laid low. We don't know if we can trust this strange robot with a spatula for an arm. I can't read this. Come on, come on. I like that you revive him using the same animation you would for picking up other players. Thanks for the helping hand. I am B -B 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 Burgle, acting science manager for this project. I am also a robot. I am sure this all must be very disorienting for you, but hopefully I can explain. Alright, explain away. I am sure this all must be very disorienting for you, but hopefully I can explain. I suspect you were miniaturized by Dr. Tully's spacer device. Why are you here in the yard? I do not know. In fact, I cannot seem to recall much of anything. A recent power surge has caused a massive raw science containment explosion. This lab, as you can see, is a disaster. And what's worse, 
The explosion has disrupted my computing power. My memory banks are corrupted. Sorry to pile on the bad news, my new friend. How can I be of service? So already he has quite a bit more dialogue than he did in any of the early access releases. He kind of just skimmed over the situation and then said, okay, go here. You are here in the Oak Lab, built and used by Dr. Wendell Tatelli to experiment on all things small. This is the base of operations for conducting experiments in his yard. Dr. Telly is a brilliant scientist and inventor. He is also my creator. My initial protocol was to serve as the short order cook of the future. But clearly he wasn't successful at that. <laughs> However, I have been recently promoted to acting science manager to assist with his experiments. No doubt my previous work experience has been invaluable to Dr. Telly. Although, now that I am processing it, I have not seen him for several weeks. I'm curious what that hinge thing coming out of Burgle's head is, that, like, bent screwdriver? I don't know if that's an antenna, or if you can, like, kind of unscrew his head with that. And or at least this plate up here. I recall where he went. It must be my corrupted memory banks. How come I can't remember anything? It seems you and I are both a little discombobulated. Given my best calculations, your biomass has been subject to covalent spacing reduction via interatomic energy extraction. In other words, you have been shrunk. It is likely this was achieved using Dr. Wendell Tully's spacer platform, patent pending. But again, you seem to have been shrunk by not the spacer in the backyard. So I don't know if Ominent has like their own copy of the technology now, because it sounds like he's kind of at odds with them from some of the story stuff, as we'll find out as we pick that stuff up. Shrinking can be a traumatic experience for tiny human brains, and memory loss is a known side effect. Hopefully your memory will return in time. How do I get home? To return to your prior size, you would need to successfully activate Dr. Telly's spacer platform. I tried that and it exploded. Unfortunately, my readings indicate it is inoperable. It appears to have suffered several malfunctions from the explosion. So I wonder then if that's kind of the main progress of this game, is you have to go to all of the labs around the yard in order to activate the various components in order to get the spacer working again and then de-shrink yourself. I am sorry, but it appears you may be stranded here for some time until we find a solution. Can we fix the spacer? Ha -ha! That is a great idea. Let me run a full diagnostic scan on it and see what we need to do to get it fixed up. Processing! Processing! Look, he's not a, a robot of the future. He's a little slow. Memory fault. Code 408B3000. Ominent OS script runtime error. Arg. I am sorry again. It appears I have sustained more damage to my memory chips than expected. Without those memories, I do not know how to repair the spacer. Dr. Tully used two types of chips to back up my memory. Auxiliary chips are small capacity chips used to store project data. If you find these, I should be able to help you learn new survival recipes. Okay, so those are the ones you would find in the early access version that would give you... I wouldn't really say, like, direct upgrades, because most of the direct upgrades comes from new materials, but they would give you helpful stuff like zip lines. Super chips are special, and they are gold! They back up full directories of my memory system. Those, however, are entirely new. I've never seen a gold chip. If we are going to fix the spacer, that data is bound to be on a super chip. So I guess the super chips are probably story progress. I suggest exploring the other labs in the backyard. Return with any memory chips you find. There are other labs? Dr. Tully has built many more labs throughout the yard. Each lab is used for various experimental procedures. I can upload their locations to your scabby. Stand by. Processing. Processing. Error. Files not found. Code 632C404. Cheese and fries! The lab locations are missing from my memory banks too! But we are in luck! I was able to retrieve the location of one of the facilities, the Hedge Lab. Okay, so I guess the Hedge Lab is actually the first one we're supposed to go to, which is a little surprising because it's actually still fairly hostile. <laughs> the Hedge 
lab is the observation center of the ARP and used for research on arachnid webbing. You will find the hedge near the house if you head southeast. The lab is located deep inside the hedge, sending the coordinates to your scabby. Try to find the hedge lab first, but there is nothing stopping you from searching the yard for the other labs. Except, of course, thousands of angry, hungry insects. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha, you're organic, and you'll probably get eaten. That reminds me. Dr. Tully locks the important labs with biometric scanners. You will need access for any chance of success. Head over to the ASL terminal and place your hand on the biometric scanner near it. Give it a moment to sync your signature into the mainframe. Once you are registered, you will be granted access to the ASL network of computers too. ASL grants access to daily work items. Nay, tasks. Nay, quests. Yes, quests. I will reward you raw science for each completed quest. Okay, yeah. I remember now that they did say that there was a system they were adding so you wouldn't have to come back and talk to Burgle directly here in the lab in order to get your daily quest because it's kind of out of the way especially if your base is off on the other side of the map in my science shop you can trade raw science back for survival recipes from experiments that Wendell conducted when he was first exploring the yard log on to the ASL terminal over there and see what is available unless you have any other questions you really should get started finding those ch chips and try not to die out there. Oh, I'm sure we will. Probably at least once in this episode Have alone. An exponentially great day. <laughs> All right. Will he actually give Hello me missions if I talk to him directly? How can I help you today? No. Please refrain from being eaten by spiders, Peter Boggs. I would never be eaten by spiders, except it already happened. There's just some raw science just sitting here in the lab. That's probably not safe. And I guess those are Tully's kids. So yeah, there's ASL terminals at all of the research stations scattered around. So we can just hit one of those whenever we want to turn in a mission or get a new one. Advanced Systems Library. Oh, it even tells you where they are. There's the crab sandbox. Okay. <laughs> We've got a, uh... Do we really need an animation for this? So, the science shop. You can see we can buy a bunch of things, including even a few mutations, which are equipable mods, basically, to our character. A lot of this stuff is actually kind of cosmetic. I mean, Have to keep things clean. fortified bases will be important, be because we're going to have to defend our base from hostile bugs, so having a stronger base actually matters now, instead of just looking different. What would Dr. Torch upgrade. Multi-story bases is also helpful, because you can't really build up properly without it. Well, I guess you can use ladders, but... It's easier to build a base with a staircase. Smithing station, however, we're going to want, because that is for all of the upgrades. And I read, too, that you can start doing cooking sooner, and, you know, making these recipes is basically for buffs. That lasts quite a long time. They pretty much last you a whole in-game day. So we'll grab that, too. And now we're out of raw science. He also has some quests. Kill weevils. Explore the Great Oak Beacon, and kill four worker ants. All right. So I guess we're going to be killing those ants sooner than I thought. All right, grab all these, something to drink. these ropes here. Oh, man, we are dying of dehydration. And there's no water source in here. You'd think there'd be, like, food and water in these labs for when you're stuck in here. Alright, where was that, uh, that biometric scanner? It's in here, right? So this is the battery room. I'm assuming this is what exploded or got overloaded. 
I like that it's just a bunch of 9 volt batteries. Like, are they much more powerful because they're powering something tiny? There's just a random pebble down here. Uh, let me have a torch. Did I unequip my torch or did it run out? I think it ran out. Can we make a, a slime mold torch? Yeah. Again, it's not as bright, but, my mom always says I light you know, up it's better room. than nothing, and it lasts an okay amount of time. Oh, interesting. Pretty sure there used to be a hole down here. This morning, I installed the borrowed lab modules. Another one of my forgotten inventions from the early days. I had such grand notions back then. The Kinder Science Mini Quick Little Chemist Lab Educational Toy for Children. Oh, God, I'm really dying. But no, Wendell, we can't possibly put hydrochloric acid into the hands of children. The lawyers will never agree. <laughs> it's a good thing I never told them about the Bunsen burners. Odd that I have nothing I drinkable in here. Toy pieces in this way. Hmm. I yes. digress. The lab network is now up and running in the... I wonder if it'll let me respawn here. <laughs> Main power will run through here. The nope. old lab is the center of operations for the backyard. So, I guess the labs they're using are actually playsets originally? Wow, that torch does not last long. I guess I was wrong about it lasting. Alright, um, we don't have anything because we just died, which means we have to wander through the hostile darkness to get back to the lab. We definitely want to build a respawn over there. Just for when we do have to go back. Yeah. Nice and clean. And yeah, we found one of those uh, tooth-shaped vitamins, but you need a tier 2 hammer in order to bust those open. They're super important, though, because those are your permanent character upgrades. You spend those as you find them. And that's, uh, well, that was one of the reasons you had to go talk to Burgle, but I think we can do that from the terminals now. Alright, I need to try and find the materials to make a torch in the dark. Don't we have to kill weevils? That was one of our dailies, right? Where is he? Can't actually see him. Man, it is actually really extremely dark. I guess I haven't played this game without a torch in so long. That I forgot how dark it is when you don't have one. Alright, well there's some sap. Should be enough here to make a torch. Oh, but we need dry grass too, shit. And this is... Kind of the worst place to find it in the map, because it's actually really well hydrated here. <laughs> so if we go here and we go this way, we should hit the edge of one of the dry grass zones. It does look really nice at night. And especially because the darkness hides some of that weird extreme depth of field they went with. Clover... We also want to find a thistle plant, which you can find because they have big purple flowers on top. But uh, we need one of those to make our club. We are so going to wander into a spider. Larva. Yep, we don't want to fight those, and there's like three of them. <laughs> They're not too hard to escape, though. They're not quick. Alright, we might as well just go get our stuff. I'm not going to be able to tell it's dry grass unless I get really close anyway, so... No point. Hmm. The wolf spiders might be out, though. But you can hear them when they're around, so it's not like they're usually going to sneak up on you. Is 
See, like, I love how the light looks there. And I think they added moths. That's one of the things they added in the 1.0 release. I would think that if there's moths, they would be up here, right? Oh, it's so bright. I feel like this would actually blind peep. Tower to Nat, say intentions. Your flight path is not cleared. Alright, so this is actually the, uh, the daily we picked up to complete the trail marker. We don't have any, uh, clovers or plant fibers, though. Yeah. There's also a web here. I marked that one off the list. Gotta peep everybody. I'm holding raw science in my hands. Get out of the way, Nat. They can't harm you or anything, but they will try to just keep bumping into you. They like to be annoying like that. Also, speaking of wolf spiders, let's see if we can get a scan on one of these guys. I believe they are weak against stabbing, but I'm not 100% sure, so I want to check that. <laughs> it's nice, though, because now we can actually, like, prepare before fighting something for the first time without having to, like, open up the wiki and check what a weakness is. Alright. Uh, that is also the wolf spiders. Seems like they're not active yet. I think they don't activate until day three. Unless you're playing on, like, the hard difficulty. When I died. Still not really sure how that respawning thing works, but probably raw science is involved. There's a bunch of these quick menus. In it. Oh, okay. X is to pull up the peeper. So we don't have to pull up the menu every time. I'm looking for the crafting one. So I want to put down a lean to, like right here. Just so when we're in this area, we have a respawn. Okay, any more clovers, but there's a bunch of them right here. Yeah. And I can make a torch. Fiat Luke's. Okay. We're going to set as our respawn, and we're going to go to sleep. I really am curious about that castle, but we're not getting up there anytime soon. That's, like, late game. Or at least, I think it is. I don't know if it's separate from the actual late game area. Choke it down, Pete. Uh, let's see. Still have one of these. Actually, we have two of them. I can see a spider in my peripheral vision that is just wildly sprinting around in real life <laughs> to my right. What did I just poison myself with? Oh, did it go bad? Did I just eat bad weevil? I think the defrag just stacks everything into cleaner stacks. Alright, I do want to make a few bandages. Especially because I just took a bunch of damage from poisoning myself. Oh, I think I ate that weevil raw. That was the problem. <laughs> okay, water is going to be annoying. So as soon as possible, we want to make a water skin. I think we can get some thistles over here, though. Uh, maybe not. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. Thankfully, they are quite abundant when you find a thistle plant. So you don't have to keep tracking a bunch of these down if you want to make arrows. 
because they, they give you like 30. Of course, they don't stack to 30. So, we're gonna kind of fill up our inventory with these. I wonder if we could build a base on top of one of these. They were pretty restrictive about letting you build on top of stuff in previous versions, but I think they kind of pulled that back a bit. Because it used to not let you build anywhere near landmarks, for example. So you couldn't, like, build on top of the baseball. Uh, yeah, my inventory is fucking overflowing. We probably don't need that many, but we'll just drop them if they get in the way. So, what else do we need to make that weapon? Uh, just a rope. And I don't have any plant fiber on me, but I believe we need a workbench to actually make it. I got one. We are not going to get our revenge just yet, because again, they are actually resistant to spears. We need to get another weapon. Gotta pick up a bunch of these. Okay, so now we can make that. Oh, maybe you don't need a workbench for this. No, I guess it's basic enough that you don't need a, a workbench to craft it. And then we also want a shovel. Okay, so now we are pretty set up. Uh, I'm gonna take this off. I'm going to put my other weapon on here. We still want the spear, though, because, again, it's good against things like ants. And we're going to put the uh, shovel on here. Oh, boy, I'm going to need to make a storage box as well. Let's see, clovers, shell, and sap. So we could put one of these down around here if we wanted. Actually, I am just going to drop these. We're not going to be using a bow right away because the starting bow is pretty bad. So, we'll just drop a bunch of these stacks now that we have our weapon. Oh. Eat that to get rid of it. Worse than my mom's Brussels sprouts. Okay, now that we have a shovel, we can actually dig these burrowers up. Which are grubs. Or something worse. Though I think you can actually tell by the sound which it is. <laughs> this pile of thistles. I believe if it is something bigger than a grub, it will actually make more of a, a grumbly sound. Another milk molar? Oh, we can't even break the regular ones. There are two kinds. There's the regular white ones, and there's the gold ones, and they're for different categories of upgrades. I believe the gold ones are actually upgrades that affect all of the players in the game, whereas the white ones are individual character upgrades. So you can, like, globally increase the stack size of items, for example. Okay, we got our weapon, which does generic damage rather than, like, blunt, and spiders are not weak against generic damage, like I mistakenly said in the last episode, but they are not resistant to it. So this is our spider-killing weapon. I guess we should just explore around. The hedge is over yonder, so that's our, our next story objective, but I don't think we are geared out enough for that yet. In fact, we probably want to make a set of acorn armor. Uh, but we also need to do some scanning 
specifically of that grub hide we picked up because that's how you make the canteen. And we're gonna need that because water is a problem right now. Okay, time for revenge. Oh, I forgot their combo doesn't get interrupted by the block. They do get stunned though. That's the advantage of the uh, club. Really? Why is there even a mite in this area? <laughs> well, dead now. Oh, that would have finished him. Alright. First spider kill. Confirmed. Those guys definitely were not anywhere around the yard previously, though. They were only in one area. But I guess they decided it would be nice to have some weaker spiders in the starting areas instead of just having orb weavers everywhere. Okay, there's a lab around here somewhere. Taking a look. New one for the beast, Jerry. <laughs> Got a real close look at that guy. Okay, there's the tech chip we need for Burgle. So that whole kind of square down there is the hedge zone. I'm gonna grab some more clovers so we can drop down a lean-to wherever we need to. Because that's the only kind of limited material you need for those, since uh, they don't grow in every part of the yard. I tend to stock up when I remember. All right. We also want to get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need. Like Mite Fuzz, I'm not going to need that right now. So we can uh, drop a stack of that. Grub Goop I'm not going to need, though I should keep it until I scan it. Not really any of the stuff I want to get rid of. We have to... <laughs> we have to pick somewhere to make a starting base, at least. I don't know if we're going to just use one base for the whole game, but... Somewhere... So we can drop off all this inventory stuff. Oh fuck me! That is three mosquitoes. Thankfully, mosquitoes can't really hit you when you're moving. They don't have an attack that hits you without stopping. Oh, there's a chance to get some more scans in. Ladybug, stink bug. I wanted to scan one of those mosquitoes, but then they all fucking came at me at once. Oh, also you can see next to my health bar, the health of my armor. Every time you die, you do actually take a big chunk out of your durability, I forgot about that. So, our starting armor is not going to last long. Okay, where the hell is this? There's a research station around here somewhere, you can see we have it on our radar right now. I thought it was over here, oop, larva. They're not very strong, like I said. Now that we have a decent weapon. They are, however, fairly numerous. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be larva of. Yeah, I think the club is better against them. So we'll get a heal going. Usually you actually want to use a bandage before you go into a fight against tough enemies. There's another one behind me. Oh boy, we're going to run into something worse if I keep backing up. Alright. Kind of didn't expect to get owned by Lar- Oh, are you kidding me? Why is there a wolf spider here? <laughs> In the daytime. Alright, well, we're going to die again. That poison is going to kill me. Well, that was a nightmare to respawn to. <laughs> oh, fuck. I think he's stuck there. Did he, like, clip through? Oh, he's gone now for the moment. 
Jesus. I was not expecting that. I wonder if it's because I built something here. I wonder if that, like, attracts their attention. Alright. Our armor is... Pretty much scrap now. And to repair it... Oh, we just need clover leaves. We could actually do that pretty quickly, except we don't even have our axe. Better than starving, I think. Oh, boy. So, yeah. Getting that better armor is definitely going to be a priority for me. <laughs> Heavy armor does make you use more stamina when you swing your weapons now. That's one of the changes they did in the summer combat patches. But... I think not dying in a couple hits is probably worth the uh, hit to your stamina. We also want to make a shield as soon as possible, because that'll actually kind of make things easier. Especially because you can still parry with it. Alright, a bit of a walk, but nothing in this game is like so far away that it's usually painful to go back and get your stuff. if we could like clear off a hill like this and build our base there or would the grass start growing through the base I've never actually really built a base in a grass heavy area I would say that this area is not bad except for the fact that it's full of fucking larva also enemies get their health back if you break combat with them I believe they still use the system as well, where each hit in your combo does more damage. So you are actually encouraged to do a full combo instead of just using the first hit. Yeah, my armor exploded right off of me. I could repair it, but I'd rather just make better armor. Did he not drop anything? Craft a piece of armor, it says, as if I haven't done that. Uh, we want a larva spike from these guys if we can find it. Which they have not dropped yet. They did drop a acid gland, though. Whatever. I haven't really decided where we're going now that we have this club. I guess we should kind of head back towards the middle for now. At least build a crappy little starter base there so that we have somewhere to dump all of our adventure gear that we obtain on these adventures. Oh no, we're packing Mosquito Zone. Home for a second. You got one. Water, please. They are, I think, the weakest of the underwater enemies. But they don't really give you anything. Except for meat that you can eat without cooking. Because they're made of, like, goop. Don't even need to boil it. Alright, yeah. Let's head back towards the middle, because that's where my workbench is. No so, like... It's a larva. It's also just skating by. <laughs> I think it was asleep, but it didn't stop moving when it went to sleep, so it just kept sliding. This right here also doesn't seem like a bad place for a base that has an overlook, except I know that there is a wolf spider around here somewhere. Oh. Stink bug. Bombardier or, uh, Bombardier Beetle. Bombardier Beetle. Beetle.
already got one of those. Ladybug I already got. I think we're heading the right way. Oh, where are you going? You don't want to fight now? Too damn bad. Don't start none, there won't be none. Yes, we are going the right way. I need to put down a trail marker so that I can actually remember where I put my lean tos I usually drop those around all over with the little markers so I can check in where my nearest uh, save point is, basically. He doesn't have any friends around. Kill him. No one to witness the crime. Except this weevil, and weevils are not snitches. Even when you've killed a whole bunch of them. I need these ant parts, though. Those are actually useful. Uh, I guess we'll drop these clovers. Location marked! I hope that mark doesn't stay there. trying to hit the lab as well on the way or the research station because we have a bunch of things we need to scan in order to make progress the fuck was that oh that was a crow yeah the crow landing I was like what is that explosion Taking sound the crow likes to come and hang around the yard at various points, and it actually does drop feathers, which we need later on. Those are high-tier materials. You cannot harm the crow, though. And why would you want to? Oh, I guess you already... You get the payout as soon as you do it? Find the Grave Robbery Burgle Chip. I think I know where that one is. Okay. So, we're gonna want to scan... The ant parts. Because we want to make a set of red ant armor as that will actually let you blend in with the ants and they'll let you go into their ant hill without attacking you. Specifically, the soldier ants won't attack you since the regular ones already don't. And the red ant club, which is a very useful club weapon that we'll probably be using for most of the game. At least I did in my previous playthrough, but they have added higher tier weapons since then. The grub hide. Which gives us the uh, canteen. I don't think the grub armor is very useful for us. Uh, we got the bow recipe. Spike strip, which I guess we'll actually need to use now that we need to defend our base. Before, I only had one of those because there were... ants that kept trying to eat my pet weevil. <laughs> oh, that's not going to go away, is it? There we go. Alright, so now we just go back to the little camp we set up. Oh, there's now there's raw science down here. I guess we weren't far enough along for it to start spawning or something? Or that was a different hole than the one I thought we went in last time. 
All right, cook that. Hope the ants come around to steal it. So for the acorn stuff, oh, we do need mite fuzz. That's gonna be a pain. I'm probably gonna have to grab some of that before the next episode. Cause I don't think grinding for uh, mites is very fun to watch. So we can make the actual body. Uh, we don't have enough parts. Mm. Salt. Ew, why is it salty? <laughs> Let there be light. Now that was a sprig, I don't need that. I need these. We are going to have to pick up a lot of plant fiber across the game, like I said. Because rope is constantly essential. Oh, I guess we can drop the, the broken clover armor. We're not going to fix that. Okay, canteen. Very easy. Unfortunately, we have to put that on our bar because you can't fill it up without pulling it out, I think. Got any water around? Not seeing any. Hmm. Well, let's just go to sleep. Nope, never mind. We're too awake. We cannot sleep for another four in-game minutes. Alright, make the chest piece, and... Well, we can make the legs as well. We just need more rope. Which I don't have enough for. do that before we go anywhere, but I'm not really sure where we're going to go next. I guess we just explore around a little bit. Check out some areas, try to grab some resources. Oh yeah, and we want to make a storage box here so that we can dump some of what we're carrying right now. Because some of this stuff, like the grub hide, we don't really need for the moment, but we will need it in the future, so... We want to have somewhere to put it. Hmm, that uses acorn bits, though. Yeah, we don't want to use those because we need those for our armor. So instead, we'll grab that. And then place a storage basket here. If we put any food in these, the ants will steal them, but thankfully we don't really need to store any food right now. So we'll put the, uh, the ant parts in there. I mean, we're going to have to scan this stuff later, but right now it's just kind of taking up space. a little better. Feeling a little safer now. Heat would be all about feeling a little safer. So at some point we are going to need to kill a ladybug for a couple of different reasons, and I am not looking forward to that, because that was a rough go in my previous attempt. 
They are, uh, kind of like tanks, honestly. <laughs> they will pretty much one-shot you with some of their attacks, but it is easy to avoid most of them or block them. And they take a lot of damage. Can you even target the eyes? Not sure. Alright, that's for storage. I don't know what you can make with the bandage. Oh, an eye patch. Okay. <laughs> Every time I think I've gathered enough of this stuff, I craft a few things and suddenly I have none again. Make more bandages. We want to have a big stack of those, but of course that also uses our plant fiber. So now we have to pick up a bunch more. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if there's a really a good way to get a lot of this. You can farm it, but you don't get that much from the thing that grows in the farm. I think you're kind of always relegated to doing this or chopping down a lot of grass. Like, if you are building your base, and you're cutting down a lot of these grass things, then you'll end up with a lot of extra. I'm also going to want to repair my spear. Getting kind of low. It's not very durable. Now we just use one rock to repair it. squishy now what does the eye patch do we could just make one of those for now until we can make the helmet plus attack minus damage resist so it makes you weaker hyper stamina I mean five might fuzz is not that much it's just finding five mites when you need them when you don't need them, they're goddamn everywhere, but when you do, suddenly they become much more scarce. However, if we go this way, we should find some. They tend to hang out in the... oh, I'm getting dry. Nice and clean. And if I can get to this one, we can store it in our canteen. I guess you can just kind of whack it with the canteen. All right. Now we got a little bit of extra water for later. You run into trouble? I'd prefer not to die of dehydration for the rest of the game, if we can help it. Uh, we can fit another one in there, though. I think I saw one up here. Right there. All right, now we are all moistened up. I guess we can get to the uh, ant hill over this way. That'll at least give us something to see before we wrap up for this episode and come back to start, I guess, gearing up for the hedge lab. You kind of want, like, tier two equipment, I think, for that. Okay, here's the red ant ant hill. That's a soldier ant. I can only tell the difference from here. Mark that one off the list. They are automatically hostile, and they are actually fairly tough. But as soon as you attack one, all of the other ants will come after you. 
So this is not a great place to farm ant parts unless you can lure a stink bug over here. Because there are stink bugs nearby and they will massacre the ants. And then you just come in and clean up. All right. We've made an enemy. We've probably made a grievous mistake here. See, even when the soldier ant is hostile to you, the worker ants won't be until you attack him. So we want to get him out of sight of the others. I don't know how you're supposed to hit the eyes when they're on the sides. I guess by side strafing? Oh, that was easier than I expected. So, the main reason we want to kill those guys is because they drop the mandibles you need to make the red ant club. Oh, here we go. They have angered a ladybug. This could be good for us. This could be a uh, beneficial situation. And we are going to take a photo of it. But, bad time of day for this, so we're going to <laughs> move the sun into a better spot. I love that you can do that. You know, why not have these features for photo mode instead of having to, like, play along with time of day when you want to take a photo? Because, you know, moments like this happen regardless of what you're doing and what time of day it is. So you'd miss them if you couldn't get a decent shot. So the ladybug should be able to destroy these two. Oh, but they've really got her surrounded. And everyone is showing up to the party. Really? Really, guys? Am I like a threat <laughs> when there's a ladybug just going to town? So we can take one of these guys fairly easily, but two, not so much. Wow, I really expected she would have killed one of them by now. Well, that didn't go as expected, but it's still an advantage for us, because now we can get ladybug parts. There's no way you can get on this leaf. That would take way too much advanced pathing to get up here. <laughs> and they can't jump like spiders. Okay, I think this guy is our, our mark. I really didn't expect to be killing these so early in our playthrough. I thought I'd struggle more with them. Because they were one of those progression points I was talking about where you need to kill certain bugs if you want to make any progress. And you cannot get the red ant mandibles from the little ones. You can only get them from the soldiers. The spear not having a combo is handy, though, because you can just keep stabbing until you run out of stamina. Alright, well, I'm feeling kind of confident now. We should be able to make the red ant club for next time and already get rid of our spiky spring. Ooh, but you see how much damage that did? But he actually got a hit on me. And that's with our acorn armor, too. Oh, he managed to get on the leaf. Never underestimate how far they can jump with one of those lunge attacks, though. Oh, fuck. I'm pinned. Alright, time to make our retreat. That actually didn't give us very much raw science. Considering some of those cost like a thousand. <laughs> Alright, I probably should not stick around. I think these guys, yep, they got their health back. And that's what I mean about don't underestimate the lunge distance. Oh boy.
We didn't even find any mites either. That's the original reason I went over that way. Anyway, that's probably a good point to wrap up. We made more progress than I expected by killing those ants as well as getting some ladybug parts. Though I don't think we have enough ladybug parts to make anything that we need. Don't mind if I do. Right where I left you. If I had a bow, I could aggro these guys a little easier, but like that's a big clump right there we're not going to get into. I wonder where those stink bugs are, though. Usually you usually can see them from the anthill. Also, we're going to go over here towards the haze before we finish here. Uh, assuming I still have some clovers. No, I didn't bring any clovers. I was going to set down a spawn point kind of over here near the anthill, but not like right next to it. Well, here's the baseball, so there should be some clovers around. It is surprising how they managed to make so many of these different bugs cute, because I wouldn't exactly call a real-life weevil very cute, but the sounds they make and their little snootlers, you can't help but feel bad about killing them. And you can get one as a pet, so we could eventually have a weevil friend, or an aphid friend. Ooh, dandelions. That is another thing we want to get our hands on, because we can fly with those. Oh, well... Gotta find the spot where I can chop it. So dandelions give you weed stems, which are a basically tier 2 equivalent to the grass planks. But we can't really do anything with them right now. What I wanted was one of these tufts, because these function like a glider. So if you're falling from high up, you can now glide down. Okay, where did that go? So, there's an accessory slot now. It used to be just a glider slot, and I'm pretty sure this is the only thing that was in it. But apparently now there are various trinkets you can put in there that will give you buffs. So, don't know what those are yet, but we'll find out. Maybe the gas mask goes in there now. Okay, here's the haze. Which we uh, cannot go into, because that will start instantly killing us with poison. Bye, spy. New one for the beast, Jerry. Also where all of the infected fungal bugs are. You know, the sort of cordyceps-esque stuff. <laughs> right at the edge. So yeah, about here is where I want to put a spawn point because we're going to be using that in the future to go into the haze. But also, if we need to go into the ant nest. It's just a generally good place. It's actually kind of a safe place, too. I wonder if we could build a base right here. <laughs> right at the edge. I think we'd get raided by ants, though, if we did that. Okay, here's a stink bug. I really need a bow for, like, aggroing stuff. Oh, boy. Oh, no, there's so many of them. I like that the sleeping one completely ignored me. Okay, if we can get him to piss off the ants, we can get a little infighting going on here. Ow, that does so much damage. Not as much as it used to, though. Where the hell is the anthill? I'm getting lost. Oh, oh. My stamina. All right, let's not, let's not fuck around with him right now. I don't want to die again. The problem is they do that jump attack and land on you. Oh, this is one of the new mechanics. This is the mixer, which is essentially a device you activate, and it will give you raw science if you defend it from a bunch of bugs. You do like a little wave defense thing, and then you get a big chunk of raw science. Oh, I know where we are. This is near my uh, previous base. Which means we are way too far to the west. 
I just wanted to find <laughs> some clovers. Well, welcome to the edge of the pond. The pond is a cool place. We're going to be going in there probably not too far from now, but after the hedge lab. The pond, however, has more than just bugs in it. Kind of weird the lack of non-insects in this game, though. Like, you have the crow, you have the koi here. Old one eye. Oh boy. You don't see me. You can't get up here, can you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he can't get up onto this little shelf. And he's blind on one side, which I think actually does get taken into account whether he spots you. But yeah, that'll do it for this episode of Grounded, I think. We'll just uh, kind of wrap up here, where my previous base was, right on this rock. And next time, we will, I guess, make some better gear out of the stuff we got from our raid on the ants. But until then, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed our miniature adventures, and I hope you'll come back for some more. Till the next one, you folks all take care.